There we go. All right, good morning, guys. Sorry to keep you waiting. Had to get some food. How are you? Let me join you over here. Thank you for waiting. Seems like I'm a little off camera, kind of, but it is what it is. <laughs> okay, let's see. OCD much, maybe? Okay. All right, good morning. How are you? No tea today, orange juice? Ah. So yesterday I was beating myself up because during the live stream, like, I made a cool little melody that I was gonna sample or do something else with, and I talked over it, and I'm like, no, why? So I ki that kind of like gave me an idea to do something else with my audio. Um, before I was going straight out into this little Altec, and I'm gonna like um, add all this stuff into my description, this, the, what I've been using for my live stream, because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Um, so I'm gonna make sure to add that soon. So now I'm going out of the Euro rack into the Zoom recorder, out of the resort, out of the recorder, into the speaker. So I'll have that audio separate, plus like less hassle when it's already just for the video. Like I have the audio if I need it, but it, but if I don't need it, then I don't use it. So I'm gonna make sure I press record right here. We are recording there. This is on, we are good to go. Today we're gonna be talking about the Casio SA5, which was like treasure find. Um, I love it. I made a video about the PT1 not that long ago, maybe like a month ago actually already. Um, but I'm really loving like these tiny ones. Like yeah, the big ones are cool, but like this is awesome. Like <laughs> it's and it looks like a toy. Doesn't it look like a toy? How are you guys? Hello, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, so it looks like a toy and I had the PT1 and I told myself I was gonna stop because I was like buying too many and there's still some more that are like on my list but I think I'm gonna stop for a minute because I have too many. Um, this one, like, I was really liking the PT1 and I got the PK10 I think but this one really surprised me. So enough talk, let's plug this baby in so you guys can see how beautiful it sounds. I'm also gonna make sure that I update my modular grid because a lot of people are, like don't know what's in my case. Um, for those of you that are new today, I have rings, clouds, plonk, the Droidbox Echo Variegate 4 Plus, Voltage Block, the Strymon A1, which is what I'm gonna use to send the Casio into the modular, um, the Black Hole DSP2, the Black Stereo Delay, the Squid Salampo for drums, and the Nate Noise Morphogene. And then on top of my 1U roll, I have Steppy, but that's going to be leaving soon. I have the little USB thing, which is going to come in handy once I start using that Keystep Pro, because it powers the Keystep Pro. How amazing is that? And I didn't think it was going to, because it's huge. Like, it powered the Keystep, but the Keystep Pro is, is significantly bigger. Um, I thought it would require more power, but it powers it flawlessly with that. And then, I don't know, I really love this mixer. I might get another one if I have that space there. And then the little headphone module. All right, so let's power this baby on. 3.5 to quarter inch cable. And then we're gonna go out. Um, let's see, let's see. First, let's hear it dry, so you guys can see what it sounds like. So we're gonna go out of that into the mixer. Look for a small cable out of the mixer into our headphone interface. I like that these cables did. <laughs> okay. All right, so power this on. We should be able to hear it. Unless we're doing something wrong, right? How much louder can you get? Okay, cool. some reverb and some effects, right? 
Okay, so that's it dry, and that is not just it. Like this thing, how many sounds does it have? Um, let's see, let's see. I think it's got like 20 sounds. That's what it looks like. Maybe more. Um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 25 sounds, and it's divided into like keyboard, wind, string, synth, and SE. I'm thinking special effects. Um, and each, okay, so like, let me just show you. Let me just show you. So that's our keyboard sound, right? You already see that sounds freaking gorgeous. No effects, like it even has that reverb on it. You hear it, right? How is the audio, guys? Let me know if everything is good. Good morning, guys. Hi, those of you that are just now joining. Um, Rope Sue says, love your Euro rack. I have my custom cage, which was allowed on its own, and I will slowly start investing on modules. Yeah, you gotta take it slow. Um, I used to have a lot, then I slimmed down, and now it's filling back up, but I don't think I'm gonna expand. <laughs> um, yeah, so, the sound. It's got four types of sound that it can be, so like four tones, or three tones, I'm sorry. that it did have though that it doesn't <coughs> is an octave key and like a lot of the smaller keyboards don't have an octave key so it's like they're on whatever octave that is which is like I think um, maybe middle C maybe even higher on some of them um, and like that's it so like unless you're using like a tune like a pitch pedal um, you're not really gonna be able to get those bass sounds but that through any effects. Do you hear that? Reverb? Or the K I mean? Gorgeous. You guys can't see it, I'm sorry. Let's see if I'll put it here. There we go. <coughs> All right. the wind and then we got four tones for that weird crazy sounds wow gorgeous let's do that sound okay so now that we have audio going into the euro rack we can start using our modules with whatever audio is going in, right? So we are going to, let's run it through this um, black stereo delay because I've really been digging it lately, like just with some, like with one thing because it can get too wild if there's too many things going on, but you just gotta learn to control it and what the knobs do, etc. volume button all delayed like this is the sound um this is the sound the volume does when you press it this is what it sounds like with the delay crazy right how else was that I 
feel like that could be sampled for sure. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> I think I just discovered that this is pretty much a looper, okay? <laughs> My mind was just blown. Um, like I said, I've been using this when I have too many other things going on, like clouds and the DSP, so it's like hard to tell what's really happening. This is a freaking looper, okay? I'm talking about the black stereo delay air cassettes. It's a freaking looper. Um, how amazing is that? It's got this whole button, and like I knew it did something, but I didn't know it was like that. Like I thought it was gonna eventually fade out. So that's exciting. So we're gonna do some more of that. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to this to those just now joining in. Thank you, RP Kingdom, for the donation. Thank you so much. Buy a table. Ah, uh, I mean, it's nicer on the floor. My back will hate me later, but it's okay. Is that hooked up via audio out, or does that have a MIDI port? Um. Audio. This is all audio. This doesn't even have MIDI at all. Just four batteries, and then I think it's like a 7.5. Yep, 7.7.5 DC adapter. Um, I'm really surprised. The Gregson says I'm really surprised by the build and sound that came out of that little keyboard. I have a Casio Casio fan, awesome from 2000. Casio CTK551 from 2000, and the sounds don't have nearly the depth. Yeah, these little ones. I'm telling you, and like I don't want to get any more because <laughs> I have enough, but um, I'll probably keep like one big one, like the 230S is my favorite, my favorite, that'll probably be the only one I keep, and then the MT20, I'm going to have to do something with the MT20. I haven't really brought out the bigger keyboards because they're all 7.5 DC apart from the 230S which is 9 volt, and they take like 6 D batteries and they last like an hour, so I'm afraid that it's gonna like die midstream. I need to buy a 7.5 DC adapter. Note to self. Note to self. Um, but yeah. I wonder, let's run this into clouds. I normally do delay before reverb, so it doesn't get so muddy, but I'm wondering how that will sound like if we ran it through clouds after. Actually, no, no. Delay before reverb, that way our loop can get affected by the reverb. Makes more sense. Okay, so we are going to go, we're gonna have clouds be the last thing on our mixer, and then we're going to go out of the stereo delay into clouds. Join all the clouds. Just want to hear it for now. Clouds isn't just a reverb, like, I don't even know how to explain clouds. It's a granular, I think it's a granular synthesizer, if I'm not mistaken. I've like scratched the surface of clouds. There's so much I don't know how to do with it, but it just sounds so good, how I use it. And like, there's another firmware, I don't know how many firmwares there are for clouds, but there's 
different firmwares that turn clouds into something else. Um, but I love this one too much. It's not a reverb per se, like I was saying, like I still feel like I need a reverb in this case. Um, cause it gets like a little too gainy, like you hear that. I feel like our volume went down again. That wasn't me, that was not me hitting a wrong key. One of the keys is like... I felt like it was hitting a different note. That's what happens with all keyboards. They're not perfect. Alright, synth sounds. Good. Okay, doable. I feel like that's what it's supposed to sound like, but it's getting um, too much gain from somewhere. You also have to remember that like the speakers on these keyboards or like, you know, the internals are old. Um, and they're really noisy. I feel like the volume is too low, guys. How does the volume sound? Good morning from Apopka, Mark Eichner. Reverb Cameron Etzminger says, Reverb into delay is great for soupy long decays, huh? Let's try that then. We're gonna go out of the Casio, into clouds, out of clouds, into the delay. Ooh, what? Yo, thanks for the tip. What have I been doing all my life? Oh my, what was your name? Thank you, sir. Cameron, thank you, thank you, kind sir. into the delay time to pitch shift the delay buffer around okay yeah like sending CV uh, I don't like sending CV to the I'll do it though I don't like sending CV to my time because then it messes too much with the pitch and I like things to be a little handleable let's see Take that back. Okay, Cameron, you're my new best friend. <laughs> I literally just got this module. Um, the only delay I've had was this echo, and let me show you what happens when you do that with the echo. If I were to do that with the echo, this is the normal echo, right? I must have switched my sound by accident. If I send um, clock or CV into the echo, I guess it gets too wild. 
But forget that. <laughs> We're using this from now on. away because it's not on hold. Um, I feel like that only works because we don't have a recorded signal. So let's see let's see what it does if we actually um, use the loop hold function. I think that pitch shifting is occurring um, because of clouds. But in a good way, right? Yeah, that was totally clouds. So I have the pitch knob on clouds all the way to the left right now. And now we're doing it all the way to the right. Isn't that awesome? So we're getting like an octave higher of whatever's playing. So what happens if we loop that? Let's see. Mess it up. You have to hold this, you have to keep it held for however long you want it to um, hold. So, boom, loop. <laughs> Insane. I think we should start adding something else to this loop. Have you used it maybe like three times? 
and this is one of my favorite things now, the black stereo delay. All right, so we're going to go out, out of our Casio, into the clouds, out of clouds, actually, yeah, yeah, let's keep it simple for now, and then we might add something else later. should turn this back on. Good morning, those of you that you are just now joining. What module is she referencing? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't remember. <laughs> it's making a shimmer effect like the line six. Okay, let's see. Black stereo delay. Yeah, I'm referring to the black stereo delay by Erica Sense. Um, I just got it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's a looper. It's a delay. Yeah, in stereo. I should do a MIDI slow bass under that. I don't have anything analog, but I just ordered the um, Dolper A1116, which is a tiny little synth voice. It's gonna go great with all of this. So can't wait for it to get here. And um, I'm out of space, so something's gonna have to go when that gets here, dang. Well, I can't have two delays in here, and this thing is totally taking over, so it might be time for the little Dreadbox Echo to... Oh, I love my little Dreadbox Echo, but... I got no room, I got no room. This is gonna be, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be tough. Tough decision. Oh, but I wonder what happens if I... Can I... I can't... I guess I gotta turn the volume down. As soon as I do anything else, like if I press the hold button, our loop is going to be gone, you know? So that's looping, that can't do anything else for us right now. It actually has a reverse button for the loop, so I wonder if that's recorded. Like, you know, is that for incoming signal or for signal that's out? So let's find out. I feel like it would be for incoming signal because I'm still hearing it in the same direction. Okay, never mind on that. Alright, so out of here. Let's find a better sound. Do you guys hear that ambulance coming? These cheesy sound effects. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's the um, airplane, I believe. It's so high pitched, I, I, I wish it was an octave lower. Alright. Then we have our synth voice, our wall voice. Um, I didn't really like that one that much. The bells is nice. So right now we are just running the Casio SFI through the uh, mutable instrument clouds for those that, that are coming in. And then we also have a loop going from a black stereo delay.
so close to being perfect, but it's not. Um, I wonder how well it will sync up if we start adding some drums in here. We're going to go out of our reggae 4 plus, turn it all the way down to gate mode, and we're going to send four gates to our squid sample. We're going to start off with a kick. We're going to send the mix out into the mixer.
Christmas. I went from analog tape to digital tape while all this was going on. Crazy idea. <laughs> Whew, pretty crazy ending but um i think it fit well that was nice that was fun i hope you guys enjoyed that um let's check out the comment section answer some questions have i ever tried lucid mask wants to know have i ever tried um pocket operators from teenage engineering uh yes i've tried almost all of them i think yep almost all of them uh, my favorite is the little sampler one and the tonic Morning from Greece. Good morning. Why don't I have friends like you? Let's be friends. Um, wow, that really reminds me of a carbon-based life forms. Oh, thank you. I love carbon-based life forms. Um, I haven't listened to them in a while. I feel like you have to be in a certain type of mood for that type of music. You have to be like in a certain creative, I don't know, mindset. No, I mean, that's always a creative mindset, but like, you have to be how do I explain it like sometimes I make ambient sometimes I make like hip-hop sometimes I make classical you know like it's whatever it is that your mind pushes you to create you know like don't fall into I make this type of music I make this type of music I make this genre or I hate this genre or stuff like that um, just make whatever you want to make let it you know genres or what, what is a genre <laughs> But I do feel like you have to be in a certain type of mood to um, be into that type of ambient that's just like landscapes, landscapes, landscapes. Um, that's kind of how I feel life, um, carbon based life forms is sometimes. But um, I also really like Boards of Canada. I like more like drummy stuff. Like I have to have a drum beat in there. If not, like I'm going to fall asleep. And I know like all my hip hop fans. Lo fi um, SP404 lovers out there are like, you know, this is making us go to sleep. So. I love having drums, like, you need drums, like, drums just wakes everything up, and, yeah, so I'm super happy with the squid sample, I'm really, really happy with it, actually, because it's, like, it's the drum module that makes sense for your rack, because if not, like, I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a kick, on a separate kick, a separate hat, a separate snare, and then, you know, more modules, like, a whole row of drums, like, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, and what the squid sample is, it's pretty much like a collection of drum machines. I mean, it's pretty crazy. You saw how I switched from like, oh, I'm going to be on the 808, oh, I'm going to be on the blah, 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 707. Um, it's got so many kits on here. But one thing that I have noticed, though, that like, let's say you've got like 99 kits, right? When you're on the first couple of ones, they load really fast. But as you get like to like the 50s, 60s, it loads really slow. So like, you know needs to be updated um yeah so that is my drum machine the variegate 4 plus being sequenced by the sample sp or electribe um sp if you like play an instrument if you are into like hip-hop sampling i wouldn't sample with the electribes i just don't think they don't they do that as well as the sp so if you're looking to sample an sp do you know any cool Latin American synth artists? Um, pues, obviamente yo, yo soy colombiana, cien por ciento colombiana. Some of you might have not know that that I'm 100% Colombian. Um, I need to do more things in Spanish, but um, saludos a todos mis fans de Latinoamérica. Espero que todos estén bien y hagan música, música siempre. Um, do you? Did you? Um, I'm just a whale. Ask. Did you get into modular because you like the more hands-on approach as opposed to doll? What are the drawbacks besides the cost? Okay, so the whole doll dollars thing. This channel actually started off um, as dollars jamming, but as I make more music and like I'm trying to define myself as an artist, I changed it to Jade Wee because that's my artist name. But like, 
I'm still very like dollish as you can see but I'm not as against like I don't hate the doll there's a lot of like hardcore dollish um, music producers and I'm not one of them I used to be but then now I see like the benefits of using a doll um, modular is expensive okay I feel like even if you can I feel like I can't afford it I mean honestly like I was saying last time a lot of the times I'm like uh oh, you know, should I sell this? It's so much money or like, but the cool thing about like, the cool thing about investing in synthesizers or, you know, in a hobby that is like something tangible, it's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm broke. I gotta sell this, boom. Okay, like it's there, you know? It's not like dumb hobbies that people waste their money on like um, makeup or something. Like I have friends that spend like thousands of dollars a year on makeup. I'm like, that's a, that's a nice you're a rat case. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, that's kind of how I like to like justify my spending if I buy something it's like okay if I buy it and I'm broke I could always sell it you know like it's there so it's like you you enjoy it while you have it I guess um unless I'm, I unless I need to luckily I don't need to sell this right now um but if I ever need to you know whatever whatever it's a material thing whatever if it goes it goes but um it's fun it's a lot of fun and you do get a lot of like I don't know, it's like a meditative feel. I feel like modular is a meditative feel. But you don't have to go like straight into modular just to get a hands-on approach on something. You can like get some synthesizers, especially like synths are so cheap right now. I remember when I started like four or five years, oh, God, it's been, I don't even know how long. Almost four, almost five years ago since I started getting into all of this. Um, that synths were still like expensive, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I think the Korg Minilog had just been announced as the first affordable analog polyphonic synthesizer. So, like, with more people making synths, you see, like, they're just becoming more accessible. You can buy synths in the used market for really cheap. I always buy things used most of the time because, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Most of the, most of the stuff, um, people use it and don't really get into it, and then they're onto something else. So, it's, like, pretty much brand new when you get something used most of the time. Not all of the time. Um, but, but yeah, that is my two takes on, on that. How did you come up with the name Jade Wee? Um, that is just, Jade is like my nickname and then Wee is my last name, I guess. <laughs> um, sorry, this is a dumb question from I'm Just Will. I'm getting into music making. What music making? Do you think I should start with a doll? I think you should start with a an instrument whatever instrument it is that you that you want to play like are you trying to produce are you trying to like make beats are you trying to like learn the keyboard are you trying to play strings like figure out what instrument you want to play and then the DAW is a way to record that's how I like to look at the DAW the DAW is a way to structure so like once you have something that to bring into the DAW then it becomes less like stressful and less uninspiring than just sitting down, staring at a blank project and just be, I mean, like, uh, what am I gonna, you know, like, inspiration, where are you? Like, you know, waiting for inspiration to happen. Like, it's such a bad habit to sit down on your computer, open up your DAW and be like, okay, I'm gonna make music. Like, I feel like that doesn't work for me a lot of the times and that's when I feel like I'm doing too much mouse clicking or like I start to lose my funk or like my groove. Um, but when I like don't even think about the dawn, it's like, okay, I'm just gonna sit outside with this keyboard and mess around for a bit. Or I'm just gonna, you know, play some, play some ukulele for a little while. Or I'm just gonna turn this on and see what happens. And then once you actually have something, then it's like, oh, okay, now I need to record. So then you go and you take it into your doll. That's like how I feel like that's a productive way to use the doll. Um, yeah, definitely get a synthesizer. If you're trying to produce and beat make, get I would suggest the first thing to get would be a synthesizer um, something tangible because like if you get a doll and you get a MIDI controller then like if you want some good sounding synth sounds you're gonna have to buy VSTs and like you know buying software why not just spend that money on hardware like it doesn't make sense to me it's something tangible I feel like with software it's gonna go out of date you know, your computer's gonna crash, you're not gonna use it. Like, I have so much software and I use like three, three, four VSTs max out of all the stuff that I have. Um, like, it sounds good, yeah, but then most of the time you're just clicking, clicking, clicking. Like, your brain got fed too many good things, you know, like, 
too much of a good thing type of thing. Like if you hear too many good sounds, then your brain is like, you know, everything starts to sound the same. So it's like with, um, with something physical, it's like you're more forced to work with what you have. But yeah. But yeah, guys, I think that's it. Um, thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the live stream, episode five. Let's see how long we can keep this going. Um, last question from Mr. Basic. If you like beat making, group bosses and NPCs are cool. Oh, I guess it wasn't a question. <laughs> Better than possibly dealing with the latency issues that arise with a, with a pad mini controller. Yeah, what he said. Um, you need a good computer to do music production, so don't think that you're gonna like be okay with like eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of, of um, memory. Like, no, you're gonna have to spend a couple grand on a good music computer if you want to get like the results that you will get with hardware. So like it evens out. It comes out to like the same kind of, I guess, um, but it depends what it is you want to invest on. Thank you guys. If you guys like these videos and you want to see me do more. Um, consider checking out my patron. Patron is a website with like where like artists can make a living. So like my goal, I know it's not gonna happen anytime soon, but I need a thousand patrons in order to be able to like dedicate full time. Like to be able to do this full time, I need at least a thousand patrons. Um, and I know it's not gonna happen like overnight, but definitely check it out. I post a lot of my sample packs. I post all my art, exclusive stuff. So check it out if it's something that you might be interested in or it's something that you can afford. If not, no worries at all. Love you guys. Thank you so much. And I will catch you in the next one.